Hey guys, welcome to Greg and Amy Talk. Hello. Today we're talking about the Oscar results. Uh, if you listen to the last episode, we talked about um, uh, the, uh, the the nominations and we made our picks. Now we're going to do vi- pretty similar. We're going to go through who who won each award and we'll we'll have some discussion about that. And we'll do it in very much the same way. Where we'll start with uh, with visual e- visual effects, and we'll work our way up back to uh, to best picture. Uh, now, Amy, I don't have who won uh, some of the the awards here, so if I don't remember, it's going to be uh, up to you to, to to bring me up to speed. That's quite all right. I marked down who won every award as I was watching. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna start it off. So we, for visual effects. Uh, for that one, I believe we had Life of Pi who won. Yes, Life of Pi did win, and both you and I were wrong, and Robot was wrong. We yeah. were all so wrong on this award. Yeah, I should actually bring up the Robot's picks, too, so I can go through that. But talk while I do that. Yes, so Life of Pi won Best Visual Effects over other movies such as The Hobbit, The Avengers, Prometheus, and Snow White and the Huntsman. Um I haven't seen Life of Pi. The effects, I mean, there there are a lot of effects, I, I admit, given um, the nature of the clips that they showed during the award ceremony. It doesn't seem like it's undeserved. I don't think maybe any of these movies were undeserving of the award. Um, so, I mean, that's what won. That's what we're living with. Uh, Life of Pi got actually way more Oscars than I was expecting it to, and this is one that I especially didn't think it would win. Yeah, well, I didn't think it would win, you know. My, my rule in these categories where there are some Peter Jackson carrot categories and you don't bet against them, but it seems I would have lost uh, some money. Yes, I think you would have. It's a good thing we didn't wager money on this because... Well, I, I, I should have. I shouldn't have, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, Life of Pi won that, and there was some, there was, uh, some, some controversy about, uh, about this because... Um, Apparently, uh, the the company that did all the visual effects for Life of Pi like went bankrupt after like shortly after the movie went out, and um, when the the guy who was accepting started to to talk about about this, they cut his mic. They did. So that's uh, that's something something to something to hear about. I think it was just because he was talking quite a bit and had gone over time. Because the Jaws theme was well on. The, the Jaws theme <laughs> was 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 going on, but it was it was still it was a so, some pretty serious business he was talking about. I, though I guess you know time constraints. I think it was primarily for time constraints because I've seen that happen before on the Oscars, where they will just cut somebody off if they're not you know an actor, actress, or director. It's true. Um, that being said, they didn't cut the the twenty minute monologue, but um, and they should have, but. <laughs> That's a story for another day. We're talking about the winners here, not the ceremony. Well, we may as well we may, we may as well lump it in. Why not? Lump, let's lump it in. All right, sure. What did you think of Seth MacFarlane? Uh, he could have done worse, but he was not my favorite host by far. He was I, my favorite host, but I thought I, I felt like he did a lot better than I expected him to. I guess that's true. My big problem was the bits and the gags that he came up with weren't terrible ideas. In theory. And if we only just got a taste of each one of them, I'm thinking particularly when, you know, William Shatner came down on that screen and was telling him all the things that went wrong. If we got small snippets of each of those jokes, I think they would have landed a lot better. Yeah. They just went on and on and on. And it, 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 it the jokes ran their course about 30 seconds in and continued for three and a half minutes. Yeah. It's a, although the, uh, that one, Sound of Music joke was uh, a slice of gold. I thought that was hilarious. Oh, that was very good. That was that w- that was the the best bit of the uh, the night for me. That 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 Sound of Music bit. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, shall we move on to our next award? Absolutely. All right. So we had sound mixing, and the winner for this category was Les Misérables. Okay. Um, you know, I, I I I saw this coming, considering that everyone was singing live. Mm-hmm. Like you had to have a sound mixer with skills to pay the bills. Absolutely. So I saw that coming. What did Robot pick for this? I don't think he did actually. No, he didn't have a pick for this one. All right. 
All right, so moving on to sound editing. And um, who did you choose for sound editing? I don't recall. I had chosen Skyfall, which was the winner. Oh, no, it was Zero Dark Thirty One. No, it was Skyfall. There was, I think that might have been the tie. Oh, yeah, it was a tie. That's We both got points for that one. Yes. Yes, it was Skyfall and Zero Dark Thirty. Yes, that was the tie. The I don't know how, how precedented that is to have a tie. Oh, it's happened six other times. All right, well. So everyone gets points except for Robot for that one, because he, he chose not to, to guess. No. All right, moving on. Short live action. Winner was Curfew. Yes. And uh, did you, you chose Curfew for this as well, right? No, I chose Buzkashi Boys. Oh, the Buzkashi Boys. Yes. All right. I don't know much else to say about Curfew um, <clears throat> other yeah. than my heart told me to go with it. Yes, it did. Yes, it, yes, it did. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything much to say. Well, that was the guy who talked about about filmmaking as art, right? There was like, um, yes, or was that no? That was the the documentary short. Yes, it was documentary short. That was in, uh, Innocente. Yes. Yes. Was... Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on to short film animated. Um, we both said Paper Man and. If, to any, if, any, if anybody's ever seen Paper Man, that should come as no surprise that it won. Yes, it was excellent. Yeah, it was very good. All right, so again, one that was not a surprise. You have original song. Um, you and I were both right, um, and Robot was wrong. He selected Before My Time from Chasing Time. Chasing Ice. Chasing Ice, sorry. That's... She's nice. Um, and, um, <coughs> excuse me, that one was actually the one that um, my dad said should have won, because I was watching with my parents. My dad said that one should have won, but I think that's just because my, my dad picks things that I, uh, opposite to what I like. Right, and so we should clarify, though, that the winner was Skyfall. This, the winner was Skyfall, yes. Chasing Time, though, was a good song as well. Before My Time from Chasing Ice. That song that was sung by Scarlett Johansson. Yes. About the ice and time. Yes. Was good. <laughs> uh, what did you think of Adele's performance of Skyfall? Um, I thought it was as good as a live performance was going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, although they, they they shortened one of the choruses, and I felt that was very noticeable if you knew the song in any way at all. Yes. Um, it just it was kind of jarring, but. It was it was good it was good and I actually have some things to say about that but it's going to be um, in the other podcast we're doing in this trilogy. Oh, the fashion podcast. Yes. All right. Yes, and I have it's it's it, and it's actually it's it's not it's not negative things to say. Good. Yeah. All right, so we'll move on to original. well, it's kind of it's like a half and half. Okay. All right. All right, we'll go on to original score now. Yep. Um, I had picked Skyfall, which yep. was wrong. I was also wrong, as I guessed Anna Karenina, and it was, was it Life of Pi? It was Life of Pi. Yeah. This is another Life of Pi win that surprised me. Um, I really wouldn't have expected that, but I didn't realize that the composer was Michael Dana, who has done scores for movies that I really liked, and actually, he did the score for 8mm, that crazy Nicolas Cage movie we watched. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> so he, he decided that all that... that, that Middle Eastern music out of nowhere was entirely appropriate for that movie. Yes, but I mean, it probably worked for Life of Pi. It, you know what? He he probably went and went and just moved a bit a bit uh, a bit south. Yeah. A bit southeast, and then hey, you got you got his music. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, moving on to makeup. Um, I said Les Miserables. Who do you say? I said Les Mis as well. And we were both right. And Robot, who said Hitchcock, was wrong. Yeah. Robot is not doing well. No, he. I think he's going to come out the ultimate loser. <laughs> yes, I think he is also going to come out the ultimate loser. All right, so foreign language film. I think this one should have been no surprise for anyone. It was Amor. Yep. And um, uh, the people I was watching it with had a lot of trouble understanding uh, the director as he was doing it, his acceptance speech, but... Yeah. Knowing the very little I know about Michael Haneke, he probably didn't care that nobody could understand him and probably preferred it that way. He doesn't really like people. Yeah. Well, you know what? He uh, 
he sank the competition. He did. Yeah. Yes. There was there was really no question that Amour was going to take this prize home. Yeah. Did, 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 did I think that flew over your head? Um. Yes, it did. Because he when he was th- when he was uh, on stage, he kept saying "thank you." Oh. <laughs> so sorry, sorry. Um. My 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 humor is too too cut and dry. No, I don't think it was that. I think it's because the people I was watching it with were kind of talking over him. Oh, okay. So. All right. So you would have gotten it. I got I you. I would have gotten it had I paid closer attention. I got you. Moving on. Film editing. Um, Argo 1. I selected Argo, and you selected... Zero Dark Thirty. Zero Dark Thirty. I think that was probably a close one, if we could see the final results. Like the numbers, but... Uh, can't. Yeah, I know. It's unfortunate. But Argo had some great editing, and throughout the night, if I lost a pick and it went to Argo, yeah. I was happy, because I really enjoyed that movie, and I'm it was, glad it was winning. It was a fantastic film. Yeah. All right, so documentary short subject. It went to Innocente, as we earlier referred. I picked that, and I believe you did as well? I did as well. Right. And this and- is- the no. very teary acceptance speech about art in schools with that girl who kind of looked like she was going to fall over. Yeah, and she you know, well, and she was also she she was apparently homeless like a month before then. Wow. Or not a month? Was it a month or a year? I think it was a year. Sorry, not a month. <laughs> this girl was homeless a month ago, <laughs> and now she's at the Oscars. No, I think it was a year ago she was homeless. Wow. Which is pretty neat. That is pretty neat. Um, so documentary feature. Went to Searching for Sugar Man, which, again, we both chose, and that was another one that was pretty much um, written from the get-go as soon as the nominations came out. It's apparently a fantastic film. I, I didn't see, I didn't know that, but my heart told me Sugar Man. Um, but yeah, that's uh, apparently what I'm hearing is that was a lock. Mm-hmm. All right, costume design. Uh, I selected Anna Karenina. Which one? What did you select? I also selected Anna Karenina. Yep, and like I said, I think I said this in the other podcast, this seems like one of those movies with good costumes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I never saw it. But all, I, <laughs> all the pictures and everything that I've seen of it, the costumes look amazing. Yeah, they're all, you know, great. And the winner for this costume one had won a few times before, I believe, I heard. Um, Possibly. I, I didn't quite catch that. I think she won for Pride and Prejudice as well. Oh, okay. Very good. All right, moving on to cinematography. See, this was a big conte- uh, bone of contention for me for the awards night. Mm-hmm. I had chosen Skyfall. Yeah. And what had you selected? I selected Life of Pi. Which was the winner. That being said, that's bullshit. You think so? I think so. Like I said in the earlier podcast, I am a huge fan of Roger Deakins, who is the cinematographer for Skyfall. I thought he did an amazing job. I thought that he has done amazing work and has not been properly recognized yet, and this should have been the time to do it. Yeah. Well, um, I I uh, I gotta say, I I I I, I we were text messaging uh, during the ceremony, and I. I, I, I kind of like disagreed w- w- with you on that because I don't know I found the the cinematography in Skyfall to be okay it was good it wasn't I didn't think it was outstanding though um, now again I haven't seen Life of Pi so I can't say for sure mm-hmm. but um, I mean a lot of the the little little clips and snippets that I saw um, it looked really cool and then a lot, a lot of the the, the 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 shots were looked looked really nice but. Um, that's just that's that's just the way it went, you know. I, I realize that, but the the other thing too that I feel like for Life of Pi is that it, so much of it was created digitally that if there were you know imperfections with the lighting or with the color of the shots or anything like that, it would have been very very easy for them to fix it in post. Mm-hmm. Whereas Skyfall, because it's all like yes, there is there are special effects for the stunts and things like that, but you look at even just the scene where he's swimming on the rooftop of the hotel like that. You could obviously, yes, you could fix it in post, but not quite so quickly and easily as you could for Life of Pi because everything's so digitalized to begin with. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's you can you can tell that's natural cityscape light, and it's very impressive. And I just, yeah, that one that one stings for me a little bit. I gotta say. Yeah. Well, then the solution is we have to join the academy. We do. Yep. Yeah. Gotta go make it right. I wonder how hard that would be. Um, you get invited to join the academy. 
Oh, you can't just sign up? I wish you could. I would have become an Academy member when I was like 15 if you could. Well, we should go to that museum sometime and see yeah. see if we can make connections, you know? <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be great. I mean, it can't be that hard. Kevin Smith's a member of the Academy. That's true. So it can't be that hard. Just we'll make a we'll make a short film. We'll throw it up. <laughs> we'll get invited. All right, why not? Just that easy. Just that easy. <laughs> uh, moving on, production design. Uh, for this one, I had said The Hobbit. Who did you go with? I had Anna Karenina, and we were both wrong. It went to Lincoln, didn't it? Yes. And do you know what that means? It was Robot right? Robot was correct. Oh, my God. I think that's Robot's first right pick. I think that is Robot's first uh, first correct uh, correct uh, selection. Good for you, Robot. Yeah. It, it also chose Lincoln. And like I haven't seen Lincoln, and so I can't really talk about the production design. It's probably actually pretty good, though. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a really good production design. No, it, it wouldn't surprise me either. I just wasn't terribly impressed from any um, of the small clips that I have seen. But, I mean, there's a lot more to it in the movie, I'm sure. Yeah, and there's that, that, from what I heard, that movie has a, a fairly large scope in terms of its um, settings and whatnot. So. Mm-hmm. so there would have been a lot more um, sets to build and places to go. and yeah. uh, uh, There would have been quite, there would have been very extensive work done. So, yeah. seems deserved. All right, so next we have a original screenplay. Yes. Um, and I had selected um, Quentin Tarantino for Django. Yes, as uh, I. And you did as well, and so did Robot. Yay, Robot. So Robot got another one correct for original screenplay. Um, and for this one, I didn't think um, that it was uh, too much of a, of a surprise, in my opinion. No, it really wasn't. Um, I... <laughs> Quentin Tarantino is always a lot of fun to have at award shows. Yeah, I wish he was kind of like uh, like he was before the Red Light trailer of Django, or not Red Light. Um, the Red Band. Red Band, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because he was ridiculous. He was so funny, um, but I did love his leather tie and how like askew it was on his on his uh, on his shirt when he went up to accept his award and just. Oh, man, that man is so ridiculous. And yeah. actually, we will hear in the next podcast what the name of his date was. I, I was going to say, I was gonna say his, his, his date's name was like something Batman or something like that. No, we'll, we'll address it in the next podcast. Yeah, she, she has a ridiculous name. I don't believe that that was her birth name. Like, I, she must have changed it. I will look it up. Okay. We'll get to it. But I feel like she is the Batman or whatever her last name is. <laughs> I feel like it's real. Well, if it is, then that oh. one strange family and she and Quentin should get married because he'll fit right in. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Adapted screenplay. Yes. So for this one, Argo had one? Argo won, which yep. you chose. Yep. And I had chosen Tony Kushner for Lincoln. Mm. Yeah. So that was that was a big pick that I was wrong about. But, I mean, it, as... I think it was Tarantino who said it uh, during his speech that this was a really great year for writers in movies. Yeah. And I, it, it seems like it could have gone to any one of them and it wouldn't have been a big surprise. Exactly. Um, so I, I, I felt that um, that it was it was a very deserved Oscar. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because, like, like, we've said this a ton of times. Argo was a fantastic movie. If you're listening to this now and you haven't seen Argo, what are you doing? Yeah, go go pause this podcast, go watch Argo, and then come back. Yeah, because it's really freaking good. It's really good. All right, anyway, um, animated feature film. So the winner for this one was Brave, which neither of us chose. Um, yes, that's correct, because we both chose Wreck-It Ralph. Yeah, which I felt was a hugely better movie than Brave was. I completely agree. Yeah. Now maybe it was they're they're taking into consideration some kind of like technical achievement or or something like that because I guess technically if we look at at the production of it Brave was a better movie than Wreck-It Ralph mm-hmm. in terms of visuals but that being said it was just a pretty meh movie you know yeah I, I feel like Wreck-It Ralph maybe for some of the older members of the Academy and there are a lot of older members of the Academy yeah. 
that maybe the whole video game aspect to them was um, maybe a little bit off-putting because they're not as familiar with it. They're not as immersed in the technology as we have been. Um, They didn't grow up with it, so they don't have that sort of sense of nostalgia, um, which I think is really kind of a key thing. I think Wreck-It Ralph can still stand on its own, even if you're not a video gamer, Um, but that might have been why they were more inclined to choose Brave. Yeah, like, and and that's that's kind of some of the problem, I think, that it's with the Academy, is that the Academy is starting to get kind of old. Yes. So uh, what we need with the Academy is kind of like a Logan's run. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to get some new blood in there. We're going to kill them? We, they, they don't have to die. I mean, just, uh... Hey, that's what happens in Logan's Run. I was just picking up... I, I, I know, I know. Like a metaphorical Logan's Run. No one has to actually die, but um, maybe their Academy memberships should die. Maybe they should. Anyway. Neither here nor there, really. Well, kind of, but... Moving on. <laughs> okay, so now we have Best Directing. Yep. Who did you choose again? I chose uh, Steven Spielberg. Ah, for Lincoln. Yeah. And the winner was Ang Lee for Life of Pi, which was my pick. Amy, please, Ang Lee. I didn't know, and then I heard it on TV, and they called him Ang, and so I was like, all right, now I know. It's done. (laughs) Amy, please, come on, that's not offending me. (laughs) Um, But um, that was good. Um, Like, apparently, he's never won one. That's not true. No? I thought he hadn't won one. That was the... the, No, he won for Brokeback Mountain. Oh, really? Yeah. Why was everyone making a big deal about this? Um, I'm not sure, because he's won before. Because I, everyone I heard is like, oh, good good for Ang Lee getting his, uh, getting, getting his, uh, you know, his director <laughs> Oscar. No, good he's been, he's won before. Well, then, everybody I've heard has been leading me astray, saying that, you know, he's been, it's, it's a long overdue, and so, not long overdue, but they were making, making it out to be a very big deal. Oh, well, I think it's just because he worked on this project for a really long time. I think I read somewhere that this was like a 10 years in the making kind of project because, I mean, they got, I think he got the book rights as soon as it came out or was at least um, attached to the project very early on and has spent a long time with it. So maybe that's why they're making such a big deal about it because of just time. Oh, well, I I was going to give Ang Lee a bunch of praise, but now I don't feel I need to. (laughs) Screw you, Ang Lee, says Greg Peterson. I didn't say I didn't say screw you, Ang Lee. But Ang Lee, I'm going to move on. I'm moving on. I was going to give you accolades, but they're not deserved anymore. Uh, well, they are, but moving on. Okay. So now we have uh, actress in a supporting role. Yes. Um, this one was a robbery. You haven't seen the movie. <laughs> no. Jackie Weaver poured her heart and soul into the role as Bradley Cooper's mom in Silver Linings Playbook. You cannot say that with any amount of certainty. I can say it with heart. And, um, I have, oh, you know, that's not for this podcast, so I'm going to, I'm going to hold on to my comment there. Okay. Uh, the but winner spoiler was. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! It's about Jackie Weaver's hair. All right, continue. The winner was Anne Hathaway for Les Mis, which was my pick, and I think Robot's pick as well. Um, Robot. Let's take a look here. Supporting actress. No, Robot chose Helen Hunt. Okay. Well, regardless, it was everybody else's lock pick for the Oscars. Yeah, it was. It was I should have. I should have picked Anne Hathaway. You really should have picked Anne Hathaway because your your <laughs> don't bet against Jackie Weaver. Strategy did I didn't say don't bet against Jackie Weaver. I said the heart chose Jackie Weaver. You also said something to the effect of she's that kind of older actress who isn't actually that old that the Academy loves. And exactly. You went on a whole sort of diatribe about your, your choice, and it was so wrong, and I told you it would be. Well, you know, can't win them all. No, you can't, because moving on to actor in a supporting role, Yep. I had chosen Tommy Lee Jones for Lincoln, and I was very wrong. Yep, I chose Christoph Waltz, and I was oh so right. Um, and uh, who did... Oh, Robot agreed with you. He chose Tommy Lee Jones as well. Robot loved Lincoln. Robot loved Lincoln. 
is what we take away from robot. Um, but yeah, I thought that was that was a that was a good. I, I like that. I was that was a good a good decision. Mm-hmm. Proves you can win it more than one time. Well, I never said that you couldn't. It just seemed like it was so so soon. It was you know his last nomination was for Inglorious Bastards and he won, and that was only a couple of years ago. So it just seemed. Just from what I've seen, except in a couple of rare cases like um, Russell Crowe and Tom Cru- uh, Tom Hanks, excuse me, winning back to back years, it doesn't really happen. Yeah. But um, hey, end of the day, a good performance is a good performance, I yeah. suppose. Sure. Question: Has Tom Cruise ever won an Oscar? No, he's been nominated. Really? Yes. For what? Top Gun? <laughs> I wish. Uh, no, it was born. Cocktail. On the- I believe it was for Born on the Fourth of July. Okay, I haven't heard of that one. It can't be that good. It's an Oliver Stone movie about. I think he's a not a Vietnam War vet. Maybe I don't remember. He's a war veteran who's like a paraplegic or something. Oh, all right. Yep. And I, I guess the Academy felt much like I did. His, uh, Tommy Lee Jones's uh, character in Lincoln, his portrayal was not as good as his Agent K in Men in Black. Um. That was the real winner in your heart? Yeah. All right. All right, so actress in a leading role. I don't think this was a surprise to anyone except for maybe Robot, who who was behind Kavenzene Wallace all the way. <laughs> but it was um, uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. Now, what I, what I uh, actually wanted to talk to you, this about, to you about this on Oscar night proper, but when... She was walking up the stairs, uh, as we all saw. She fell. Yeah. And did you see how quickly friggin' Wolverine was up, saving her? He's a superhero. Actually, and what you can't see from that camera angle, but there was another one that caught it. Uh, Bradley Cooper also ran to her aid. Really? Yes. What? Yeah, he was on the other side of that cameraman who was following the Wolverine. Really? Yes. And, um... But I, I thought that was, uh... That was, like... In my opinion, Hugh Jackman is the nicest man in Hollywood. He certainly seems like, if not the nicest, one of the nicest, for sure. Yeah. No, I'm giving him the nicest. The nicest? The nicest. All right. He's the kind of guy who I think would... Like, what he did was... I um, I heard this in an interview. Um, during the filming of Les Mis, he didn't know everybody's name, so he bought a pile of lottery tickets... And every week, he would give every member of the production a lottery ticket and talk to them. That's really nice. He's, he's such a nice guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe actually does a similar thing. He, I mean, not to, he doesn't buy lottery tickets, but he learns all of the crew members' names. Yeah? And, like, has, yeah, he likes to hang out with the crew when he's not shooting. Well, that's cool. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's just nice to see actors who don't think that they're above uh, the technical crew on a movie mm-hmm. well maybe they should do a movie together then maybe they should um what did oh, you... they could do something on stage oh yes they could that is an excellent point yeah um now what did you think about how jennifer lawrence handled herself after her big tumble on the stairs uh i think you know what it's i think she handled handled her blah, blah, blah. she handled herself as uh as good as what could have been expected like um it's her first like that's it's the biggest award she could have gotten on the grandest stage in the world relatively early in her career mhm so i think she handled herself as good as as was to be expected yeah i completely agree and you know what if she was having trouble you know the wolverine would have been up there to to help her out pat her on the back it's very true. Yep. All right. Um, moving on to our second last category, actor in a leading role. We both chose Daniel Day Lewis, and we were correct because you don't bet against DDL. You don't bet against DDL. That's you the moral just, of this story. It, you just don't do it. You don't do it. If he's in, a, if he, if you are nominated in the same category as Daniel Day Lewis, you're not going to win. Actually, that is not true. It has happened at least once that I can think of that he is, did not win. Well, who beat him? Um, I'm trying to recall. It was the year he was nominated for Gangs of New York, which was 2003. So 
I, I'll have to I'll have to check in on that. I don't remember who beat him. Is that the year that Roberto Bellini won? No, that was in like '98. He's my favorite frozen drink. Um, <laughs> I know that's not his last name. Um, I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. That if if from like two years ago onward, if Daniel Day Lewis is nominated, you're not going to win. Yeah, essentially. And all the other guys in that category knew this already. Especially Joaquin Phoenix. Yes. Who he, did not look happy to be there. No. Not at all. Not even a little bit. Nope. They, 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 they put the camera on him, he's shaking his head. He's just... Yeah, he... I mean, he's publicly spoken that he, he hates the Oscars and he hates the whole uh, charade that comes along with it. And he's... Yeah, he is just not a fan. Yeah. My mother was saying how how she she was very very felt she felt very strongly that Joaquin Phoenix was a sick individual really and I'm like I, I don't think, I don't think he is sick I'm like all that stuff we saw her a couple of years ago that was all to promote that Casey Affleck movie um no there was no swaying her oh okay so uh to the internet and um Adrian Brody beat Daniel Day-Lewis in mm. 2002 for his role in The Pianist oh Oh well, you all will never, well, what it takes to to beat Daniel Day Lewis is a Holocaust movie. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to beat him, you have to tackle a really strong subject, or a subject that is stronger than the movie he appears in. Yeah, I think that was the key. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So our last award, Best Picture, we Best both chose Picture. Argo. And we were both correct. Yeah. And Robot was also correct. Oh, good for Robot. Yeah. Um, I was I was very pleased to see that it won. I mean, we all kind of thought that it would, but you never really know, especially in a field as wide as, you know, there were nine pictures up for, for Best Picture, and you're, you're never totally sure what is going to win until the day of, uh, in most cases. And, um, yeah, especially because, you know, Ben Affleck wasn't nominated for Best Director. It didn't have any acting awards uh, behind it either. So it was kind of out on its own in that category. I felt very strongly that it would win. Mm-hmm. I thought if it didn't win, it would probably be something like um, Zero Dark Thirty, mm-hmm. which won a surprisingly few amount of awards. Yeah, um, it's it's actually really crazy that uh, Life of Pi seemed to come away with possibly the most wins of all the Best Picture nominees. Um, yeah. Silver Linings Playbook only had the one for Jennifer Lawrence. Um, Amour, I guess, only had the one win for Best Foreign Film. Um, yeah, I mean, it really, I think Life of Pi and maybe Argo came out ahead. Yeah, Argo Argo um, won more than than uh, the other ones as well, I believe. Yeah, and then I think Les Mis won, well, they won uh, Hair and Makeup and uh, Sam Mixing and Best Supporting Actress, so I guess that got three. But And then Django had two. How many did Lincoln have? I think two as well? Yeah, Lincoln only had uh, production design and uh, best actor. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And Silver Linings Playbook had one. Yes, just the one for Jennifer Lawrence. Do you find it odd that Catherine Bigelow was also not nominated for best director? I do find it odd, definitely. Um that being said, it, it's another year. I mean, I guess looking at the nominees, and I haven't seen the movie, but the one that really shocked me was the guy who directed Beasts of the Southern, Beasts of the Southern Wild getting nominated. Yeah. Because I believe that's also his first feature film, and it was based on a play. And there was just, I don't know, that was a that was a pretty big shocker that he got in over Catherine Bigelow or Ben Affleck. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody else has quite a bit of prestige behind them, so it makes sense to me, but. That one was a little confusing. Very strange. But, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. No, not really. Nope. Um, <laughs> did you see, while, while we're still talking about the, the ceremony, did you see the tweet um, that The Onion posted? I heard about it. I didn't actually see what it was. Do you know what it was? I do know what it was. Um, just a uh, disclaimer, uh, viewer discretion warning. I'm, I'm about to use some pretty pervasive language. Um I'm going to see if I can find the actual tweet word for word, but uh, it was about Kavenzene Wallace, who was the nine-year-old uh, nominee for Beasts of the Southern Wild. <clears throat> and uh, The Onion said something very, very 
rude, quite frankly, about this girl. Uh, although, maybe not unwarranted. <laughs> Um, because watching her during the ceremony, she did seem pretty cocky. She was an excited little girl. She wasn't cocky. She's like, yeah, that's me on the screen. She was excited, I'd say. Okay, fair enough. Um, she, she wasn't being like, fuck you, Jennifer Lawrence, I'm the best, or anything like that. That's true. Although I wish she had. <laughs> that would be pretty great. Um, okay. Yes. Okay, so The Onion, one of the staff members of The Onion said, everyone else seems afraid to say it. Zach Evans and A. Wallace is kind of a cunt, right? Hashtag Oscars 2013. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, like, that's not even, even, like, The Onion is, is usually very satirical or, um, they, they, or ironic, yeah, I mean, they, they're definitely boundary pushing yeah. with their satire yeah. and with the things that they poke fun at. I mean, they made jokes about Sandy Hook. They've made 9-11 jokes. Like, they're not really afraid to go there, but there's at least usually a bit of subversion that, yeah. you know, after you get past the initial shock, you start to understand the joke and understand uh, the intelligence behind. Yeah, like, that wasn't even, like, a really... a. It, it's a joke, but it's like barely a joke. It's barely a joke, and it's that's a that, horrible word to yeah. call a child. Exactly, and I don't know if Kevin Wallace has Twitter, um, but it 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 doesn't really matter, especially if you're gonna mention the Oscars, mm-hmm. like use the hashtag. Yeah, it's a it's it's kind of crass. Yeah, it definitely, it went too far. I mean, I I guess I could, you know, uh, I was reading an article earlier today that said, you know, even just replacing the C word with the word brat would have still gotten the effect across, and Mm -hmm. then no one's offended. Mm -hmm. You know, like, if they really wanted to go for that kind of joke, which it's not really, I mean, it's sort of funny, I guess, but not really. And um, there was just, if you really wanted to go there, there were plenty of other ways to do it that Mm -hmm. didn't involve that word. Yeah. And you know what? I didn't think that she was at all. I thought she was delightful. Well, good for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it would have been interesting to see how she would have reacted if she had won. But, you know, as a nominee, you can only make so many assumptions about a person. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of the big scandal of the 2013 Oscars. The Onion has since apologized. And apparently the staffer who wrote the tweet is being disciplined or... I don't know if they've been let go or what's going on, but I would I would have let him I would have let him go personally. Yeah, I mean, people screw up. It's Twitter. It's instant. You can, but but I mean, even if he had realizes, if if he or she had realized their mistake, they could have deleted it immediately after posting, and then you know it would have only been out there for a second. Yeah, and it was up there for an entire hour, so obviously they were okay with what they posted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad news. Bad news. Anyway, that is the 2013 for your 2012 Oscars. Um, so, Amy, final scores. Robot got a resounding. Let me see here. One, two, uh, three. It actually, it, it, um, Robot picked Angley um, for directing. Oh, okay. Um. Four. Four out of a possible 24 is what Robot got. Although Robot only guessed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. So four out of 16 is what Robot got. Well, you, you know what? It's admirable for a robot. That's pretty good. For <laughs> for something that doesn't understand movies. Yeah. Well, Robot loved Lincoln. Mm-hmm. But otherwise doesn't understand movies. Yeah. Um, I had an abysmal showing. Uh, I haven't scored this low since I was in my early teens. As I said when I was texting you, I, I keep track of my numbers every year. My best was 20 out of 24. Mm. This year, 14. 14 out of 24. Um, well, you know, Amy, you know, there's always next year. Don't get uh-huh. too down. I bet I better come back next year. Let me tell you, I'm not pleased. But let me tell you something, Amy. 
when next year when you're picking them, you have to throw the heart into the equation. Because as and I'm gonna get long winded here. Because it's my it's my God given right as a winner. Uh. Um, <laughs> you know, I said before this whole thing began that I hadn't seen most of these movies and that I was gonna pick with my heart. And let me tell you guys something. The heart doesn't lie most to- most of the time. It does when it involves Jackie Weaver. It, it does when it involves Jackie Weaver, because you know what? My heart didn't want Jackie Weaver. I denied my heart, because I'm sure my heart wanted Anne Hathaway. I'm sure it did, but I denied it. But the heart... Picking with my heart, I got a, a full 18 out of 24 for the for the Academy Awards this year, which is a phenomenal showing. It's, it's very good. I wouldn't say phenomenal. No, it's phenomenal. For having seen none of these movies, it's phenomenal. You haven't seen none of these movies. You've just seen very few of them. Fine. For having seen three of these movies, it's very good. Very, very good. And um, it's only upwards from here. Only upwards. I'm coming back with a vengeance next year, let me tell you. Well, we will see. We will see who wins next year. And um, I think next year I'm going to have the robot choose everything instead of just 16 out of the 24 categories. That sounds like a good plan. And then it'll... Uh, and then and then we'll have a true competition between man, woman, and machine. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyway, that is the Oscar results for this year. And if you stay tuned, you'll get the final entry entry in our Oscar trilogy, which is the. Did you really just call it a trilogy? I did. Oh God. Which is the Oscar fashion, and give you guys a heads up. I've got a lot to say. When don't you really? It's true. I always have a lot to say, but some 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 things I've got more to say on. All right. So stay tuned um, and keep an eye out for our fashion podcast. You guys have a great night. See you later.